Welcome back everybody, I'm Kalani, and in this video, which is about music, um, there won't be any music <laughs> because I'm going to answer a couple questions that a lot of people have asked me and that you may have, which is, how can I be of service to others through music? How can I, as a musician and a lover of music and an enthusiast, be of service, be of help? How can I be helpful uh, through music? It's a common question many people ask uh, themselves and, and other people like me. So I want to help you understand some of your options. So that's, that's the goal of this video. And I want to say right off the bat, if you are asking yourself, how can I be of service to others through music? I want to say thank you. Thank you for asking that question. And thank you for that great intention uh, to be of service. So I'm going to start with a couple big terms, a big umbrella terms, and then maybe we'll dig down a little from there. But I want to make this video pretty brief because... My goal is also to identify a couple of the big categories, main things you can do, things you can try, and then I'm gonna send you on your way and you can research from there. All right, so let's start with perhaps one of the most well-known terms, but perhaps the most misunderstood term, and that is music therapy. Um, I am a board certified music therapist. I didn't always know what music therapy was. A lot of people hear the term music therapy and they come up with their own definition based on their own experience or maybe based on something they saw in an article or on a website. Uh, that's totally normal. I'm not going to get into a lot of technical definitions. Music therapy is the profession of uh, providing clinical services in a healthcare setting or different kinds of healthcare. It's a healthcare profession. It's allied healthcare profession. And it is um, the way that music therapists interact with clients to help them reach their therapeutic goals. And so, big picture stuff. Somebody who is receiving music therapy uh, is in therapy for something, for some, some improvement. And it may be physical, it may be cognitive, it may be developmental, um, it may be rehabilitative, it may be end of life care, it may be beginning of life care. So music therapists, work with a range of clients from birth to death. They work with their families, they work with individuals, they work with groups, and they custom design a treatment program, often working with other allied healthcare professionals like physical therapists, speech therapists, occupational therapists, talk therapists, uh, nurses, doctors, it depends on the setting. And um, they design a program and they deliver treatment that is based in musical experiences of all types. It could be anything having to do with music, from listening to music, moving to music, dancing, which is something I hope we all like to do, uh, playing music for people, playing music with people, involving the, the clients in different ways. Uh, it could be even discussing the lyrics of music. All Anything to do with music that works for the client, that is what a music therapist does. Now, who does music therapy? Music therapists. How do you become a music therapist? I will send you to the website of the American Music Therapy Association. That is musictherapy.org. It explains it all over there. It does involve a degree in music, coursework in music therapy, an internship, and board certification. So it probably is the, the most robust and the longest pathway to being of service through music. I'm really glad I went back to school and became a board certified music therapist. I don't think everyone needs to do that, certainly. There's many other options uh, and ways to be of service. Um, so that's music therapy. You can look into that on your own. Um, and I'm going to answer a few other questions about the term music therapy later on. But let's go to another big category. And this one has a few different names. One of the main names is therapeutic musician or therapeutic music. Uh, there's cer certified music practitioners or CMPs. Uh, there's therapeutic musicians. I'll try to give you a couple websites. And I'll leave some links below too so you don't have to remember what I'm saying right now. Um, a therapeutic musician, I'll just use that term for right now, even though there are some variations of that. 
Therapeutic musicians focus primarily on, and this is this may be what you want to do, providing uh, music that is designed and intended to be therapeutic for a client. And that experience happens in the moment. And it's usually aimed at providing or alleviating discomfort, pain, worry, um, undesirable states that we want to mitigate and we want to make things more pleasant, more tolerable, uh, better, just make, make it better <laughs> through music. And again, that could be, it often is in hospice settings. It could be in hospital settings. Um, most often. So if you, you can think of therapeutic music as music that is, you know, intentionally and consciously designed and provided in the moment for a client, usually an individual, usually perhaps bedside, um, that is designed to comfort them, to soothe them, to help with the, the ailments, the pains and aches and worries of their condition. All right, that's a, that's a pretty general description. Um, there are certainly other ways music can be used therapeutically, but in general, my definition, which I think aligns with the common definition, is therapeutic music is uh, musical experiences that are designed to improve physical, cognitive, emotional, and perhaps spiritual conditions. All right, now what's, what's the difference between that and music therapy? Um, therapeutic music is usually done in the moment. It's not a treatment program. It's a here and now service. Um, more often than not, it is music that is played for the individual who has a more passive role. Not, not that they're passive, they are involved in the music. The music is affecting them, but they are usually not as involved in creating the music uh, planning the music, selecting the music, although maybe a little bit. Of course, musical preference plays a big role in what music could be therapeutic. Um, but they're usually not as involved um, as, say, in music therapy, where we might have people play instruments and select songs and, and just be more involved, especially over time. So therapeutic music, wonderful service, uh, a really important and valuable part of um Anybody it, that, who is in a healthcare setting who needs something warm and wonderful brought into the environment. It's a wonderful way to be of service. Um, therapeutic musicians are often accomplished musicians, professional level, uh, but, but you could pick, or and people do pick a, a, a focus area. So unlike music therapy, where the standards are uh, a little more broad, you have to be competent in guitar or ukulele, keyboard, singing, percussion, lots of other things. Uh, therapeutic musician, you might have one main instrument that you play, and you just play that instrument, and you have a repertoire of music, and you go into a setting and you play for people. And that could apply to the flute, Native American style flute, singing, ukulele, it was just whatever instrument you want to bring. So you can look into that and become a certified music practitioner, um, slash therapeutic musician. And that would be a training program. Uh, there's different training programs that you can do and you can sign up for. Now, taking another step back out of the uh, healthcare environment into a more recreational environment, you could also be of service um, in different ways. Playing, I know a lot of people who play, for example, play for yoga classes, or play for meditation, or play for services of various kinds. I'm sure many of you have uh, bands and choirs in your place of worship. That's always very common. Um, but you could take that kind of angle and play music for, let's call it uh, ceremonies, services, events, occasions, um, you know, generally, we're not providing therapy. Uh, the people who are in those situations, the, the consumer, if you will, um, don't have any, necessarily, they don't have any issues that they're trying to cope with. So it's not so much of a, of a treatment modality. Uh, that's not really the relationship. Um, sometimes that music, we could use the term beneficial music. 
Uh, supportive music, those are also terms that are common. Some people use the term rec recreational music. However, that would be more when the people are involved with the music making, um, say as in a drum circle, for example. You can involve people in learning how to play an instrument and that could be recreational, also educational, but it can still be in the beneficial touching on the therapeutic side. Look, none of these things are absolutely discrete. It's not like we go from, this is music for performance, and now we're gonna completely leave that and go over here and do therapeutic music making, and now we're gonna leave that and do music therapy. Of course, it's a continuum, and of course, it's a spectrum, but I'm giving you the big picture the big buckets. All right, so the other question, the thing that is on some people's minds, and this is another part of all of this, when you wanna consider what can I do, what are some options for me, I realize that some of you are thinking, what can I do to be of service and get paid <laughs> and make some money? Now, if, you're, if that's not part of your, the equation for you and you're just looking to volunteer, I think you're gonna have more options more readily available because you can just volunteer. If you want to earn a living or earn some money, then I think you wanna take a path that is one of the certification programs, the accreditation programs, like being a certified music practitioner, or if you have the time and you wanna put in the effort, go through a music therapy program and come out the other side with a degree and a certification as a music therapist. Then, you can uh, command more uh, for your services uh, because you've got bigger support, you've got people advocating, you've got people legislating, you've got people uh, on your team. You join a much bigger team and a much more organized team. So if you wanna do that, those are the trade-offs. So your time, your investment, your money invested up front, later on you have maybe a bigger payoff down the road. If you're the kind of person that says, you know what, I just want to play. I love playing. I want to be of service, but I don't want to do any of that training. I just, I don't want to, I've done it. I've been in school. I want to enjoy myself. Then I recommend not doing that. Don't do it and just play and volunteer. Um, even if you wanted to maybe become a music therapist or a therapeutic musician, I still recommend volunteering uh, you can job shadow a lot of us. I get calls frequently, several times a year. Literally, people call up and they say, I'm interested in music therapy. I'm thinking about going to a music therapy program. Can I job shadow you? Can I watch you? Can I come to a session? And I say, yes, you can. <laughs> I invite them. And a lot of music therapists will do that. I don't know about therapeutic musicians. I think it depends on the setting, of course, because we have ethical considerations, like is it appropriate to bring somebody in to the environment. But in many cases, it's okay, uh, and people don't mind, especially if you're there, to volunteer and to contribute and to learn, which I hope you are. Uh, and if you weren't, you wouldn't be watching this video up to this point. <laughs> so let's get back to some of the nitty gritty of uh, some of the other derivatives and some of the other terms that you might see floating around out there. Now, as a drummer percussionist, I've been around since before a lot of these terms were even terms. For example, there is a term that I've seen, somebody wrote a book called Drum Therapy, and I just had a colleague who's a drummer and educator message me, and they said, what is this drum therapy? And um, here's my short answer to you. Drum therapy, if somebody's using the term drum therapy, it's probably a branding exercise. There isn't a profession called drum therapy. There's, there isn't a certification called drum therapy. I know there is one person who wrote a book called Drum Therapy. And I think it was just their, their idea and a term they chose. And it can be confusing because drumming is part of music and we have music therapy. So is drum therapy a different kind of music therapy? Um, it isn't. We can't have a different therapy for every single instrument. Otherwise, we'll just have every, we'll have saxophone therapy, trombone therapy, ukulele therapy. I'm a fan of kazoo therapy myself. Um, so if you hear a term like that, um, it's probably just somebody's idea that they had for themselves and it's probably their own thing and their own branding. That's a personal choice that they made to use that term. It's not coming from a profession or a certification or an organization. 
Uh, same thing at this point with therapeutic drumming. Therapeutic drumming, of course, is a form of therapeutic music making. Um, it's not a formalized profession. Uh, I don't think there's necessarily a problem with that. Um, however, I'm not sure where therapeutic drumming fits in with the greater category of therapeutic music. That's another question. Is it different? What makes it different? What makes it therapeutic? Is it different than this or that? Or is it, is it necessary to use these terms? These are all important questions that I'm going to leave it, <laughs> I'm going to leave to other people <laughs> to debate and answer. But as far as I know, again, it would be more of a branding exercise to use a term like therapeutic drumming. Uh, here's another question that uh, sometimes I get. I'll get a, maybe a, an email request from somebody and they say, you know, I'm a psychotherapist and I'm thinking about doing some music therapy in my practice. What can you teach me? Can I do, you know, some music therapy? Or it might be from an occupational therapist or whoever, another therapist. So the question is, is when somebody who is a therapist incorporates some music into their therapy, is that music therapy? And it's a good question. Um, the short answer is no, because music therapy is its own profession with its own practices, its own training. The way music therapists are trained to use music, to design musical experiences, to leverage the power of music, that's its own thing. So just combining music in with another form of therapy uh, is not doesn't equal music therapy. It just means that, let's say, you're a physical therapist and you put on some music to do the exercise, you're using music enhanced, you're doing music enhanced physical therapy. Or if you're a speech therapist, talk therapist, let's say talk therapist or speech therapist, and you put some music on and you use that as a background or you use it as an organizational tool, like to say a word at a certain time, you're still doing speech therapy or you're still doing talk therapy, you're just using some music to enhance that practice. It doesn't become a whole nother therapy. Just like when I do things having to do with movement in my music therapy practice, I'm not becoming a physical therapist. Um, or if I'm working with people on speech items, speech category things, it doesn't make me a speech therapist. I would never claim that. So using a modality from another type of therapy does not equal that therapy. So that's, I hope that makes sense. Um, so look, I'm going to wrap up this video here. This We could go on and on. It's a big topic. It's interesting. But I think hopefully for you, I've answered the question for you. What are some of the options available to you in terms of playing music for people? Really quick recap. Let's start with the last one first. You can volunteer. You can start with music for yoga classes, music for celebrations, music for services, uh, music for different kinds of events. And I think that is a wonderful way to get some experience. I do recommend working with somebody else who has more experience, maybe job shadowing a therapeutic musician or music therapist and stay in that realm for a while. Get used to it, build up a little bit of experience so that you can decide if it's something you want to do more of, uh, if you feel like it's a good fit for you. Uh, from there, you could look into doing uh, what is sometimes called bedside music making, aka therapeutic music services, um, providing music for people who need relief from stressors, anxiety, discomfort, um, by doing providing therapeutic music services for people. Again, I'll leave some links below. And then if you really want to make the big commitment and you're, you are looking for a, maybe a profession change, um, and you can be older. I went back to music therapy uh, my training when in my 40s. Um, so, and there were people older than I was. It's never too late. So you could go back to school. Uh, you will need a music degree. Uh, it's a big commitment. You, it's hard. You, I mean, you, you got to do a lot of work. But when you come out the other side, if you have that music therapy degree and training and understanding and perspective, you will be a member of a big community of amazing people. You'll have a lot of ad advocacy. You'll have support on the governmental level. Uh, and then that translates, of course, into enhanced income opportunities, work, etc. All right, so that could be your end goal. If you have any questions or you'd like some advice or guidance about anything I've talked about, feel free to reach out to me. 
You can email me at kalanidas at gmail.com. You can visit my website, kalanimusic.com. My music therapy website is goldenstatemusictherapy.com. And thanks for tuning in, and good luck to you in any and all of your musical pursuits.